Hello, this is uh, Silvia Pavoni, Investment Editor at The Banker, and I'm here with uh, Brian Kaplan, Editor of The Banker, to discuss the key issues involving Latin America ahead of the Feliband Conference, which will be held in Miami uh, between 15th and 17th of November. Uh, Brian, Latin American countries have entered the global financial crisis in better shape than others. This is also thanks to uh, um, higher levels of uh, reserves and uh, um, improved banking systems. Um, but what do you think we can expect from the region's economy in the next 12 months? Well, as you say, I think that it'll be a very exciting Feliban meeting. Uh, Feliban has become the most important meeting of Latin American bankers that there is now, and the banker will have a special issue for the meeting as well as uh, a team of, uh, of editors there. And uh, usually they used to say that when America or the West sneezed, Latin America caught a cold. But in this time around, it's been completely different. And uh, the Latin American countries have been uh, well prepared for the crisis, so they haven't been running either large budget deficits, they've built up good reserves, and they've generally managed their economies in a better way than ever before. So now they're starting to see the benefits of that, because as the economy internationally is reviving, and in particular China is still growing strongly. There's a big demand for Latin American commodities, as you said. And Brazil and Chile in particular are benefiting from that. And what they're saying in Brazil is that they're the last into the crisis and the first out. And of course now I think one of the things that the um, delegates to Feliban will be discussing um, will be how they can position their banks to take advantage of these very exciting conditions for growth. Um, and so um, moving on to uh, the banking uh, system um, across Latin America, what um, do you think are the expectations for uh, the different uh, markets? Where do you think uh, we can we are going to see the biggest growth? Well, when you look at Latin America, clearly uh, Brazil and Mexico. Uh, always stand out as the major markets. And uh, there is some differences between the two because um, the economies like Mexico that are very strongly dependent on the United States as an export market have tended to suffer more than economies like Brazil that have diversified export markets. But as far as the banks are concerned, I mean, we've seen a huge improvement in regulation. So Brazil has one of the best regulated banking systems in the world. And of course it's come about because they've had so many banking crises in the past that, that they've built a very strong regulatory system, has very high capital ratios, it had strong reserve requirements with the central bank. So when the economy started to run into turbulence, uh, they were able to, they had a lot of leeway for distributing and lowering reserve requirements and allowing the banks to, um, to lend out more and encouraging them to lend out more. So that's kept Brazil going through the crisis. Now, when you look at Latin American banks as a whole, uh, in the November issue of the Banker, which will be distributed at Feliban, we have our top 100 Latin banks ranking. And the Tier 1 overall, the Tier 1 capital, is up 14% to $165 billion. And you've seen some very exciting changes in banking across Latin America. Uh, obviously, you've seen uh, a lot more banks in foreign ownership, particularly with the Spanish banks BBVA and Santander having very dominant positions. But in Brazil, you've seen the most exciting changes of all because you've seen a huge merger between the Brazilian uh, private sector giants Itaú and Unibanco, which now forms the biggest bank in Brazil and the biggest bank in Latin America. And as well you're seeing uh, Santander consolidate its position in Brazil so they put together Banespa which is what they already owned with the uh, Banco Real operation that they got from the ABN AMRO purchase and then on top of that they did a big rights issue this year uh, for eight billion dollars. It gives the uh, <coughs> Brazilian part of Santander a market value of about 50 billion and it's contributing a fifth of Santander Group profits. And that rights issue is going to be used to add about a 600 branch network to 
the existing branch network. So you can see that uh, you know the banks that have invested there earlier are now beginning to realize that the, some of their most exciting growth opportunities anywhere in the world are going to come from Latin America. Well, Brazil also hosts uh, the region's largest financial center, Sao Paulo, um, which also has the most sophisticated capital, ma capital markets um, in uh, Latin America. Um, clearly, Sao Paulo is determined to grow further, uh, but what other centers do you think have similar ambitions? Well, we've seen a very big rebound in all the Latin American markets this year. So, this, the year to date, in local currency terms, you've seen Argentina come back 107%, uh, Brazil 70%, Chile 39%, Colombia 42%, Mexico 31%, and Venezuela 43%. But I think that Brazil is the standout market in, in Latin America because of the sheer size of the economy. And really, Brazil and Mexico are the only two markets that you could say at the moment had an international dimension. So the trend for other Latin American companies in the past has tended to be to do their main listings in New York. Now it'll be interesting to see whether going ahead from here they decide to rethink that position. I mean it may be that the focus uh, in years ahead is less on New York and more on developing local markets. Now, one of the things we've done in the banker is we've put together a ranking of international financial centers, and that's going to appear in our January issue. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how some of the Latin American centers like San Paulo and like Mexico now rank against those other centers. And certainly within the region, uh, they've done a great deal to modernize the capital markets and put in place very advanced systems, certainly Sao Paulo has the most advanced trading and clearing systems of anywhere in the world. So they're in a position now where they can compete equally with any other market in the world. And it'll be exciting to see what happens going ahead.